off your television sets. Turn them off now. Turn them off right now. Turn them off and leave them off. Turn them off right in the middle of a sentence I'm speaking to you now. Turn them off. Welcome. We are back for another week to recap True Detective. Nice you seem country. thrilled. No, no, like it's like beside like, yourself. No, the, the the conversation should be interesting, um, at the very least. But as <laughs> D is backing away to to close the door and and scooting closer to put her headphones in. All right, there we go. All right. So D, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. Um, Shouts out to um, the good Reverend Doctor on this great day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and shout out to Coretta, too, the real Coretta. But we are here to discuss um, True Detective Night Country. I wish I could give you an episode title, but this is just simply named Part One. So, no exciting episode title for you. It's just simply Part One. Um, I did not sanction so, that real Coretta remark. I just want to. I just want y'all to know that was that was off the cuff. We didn't discuss that. That was all on him. Just so y'all know. Of course, of course. I got to throw some zingers in there, but the be, bitch wasn't um, funny. <laughs> <laughs> I will add this month. But yeah, um, but yeah, D. Um, general impressions. So how how are you feeling about the first episode? Um, funny thing is, you don't know the name of the episode. The episode is called Part One. No, I said that. I said that it's simply named Part One. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say you, you you should have that down for the rest of the season. Yeah. If nothing else, um, general impressions. I I don't think I really have any. I um mm. I like the actress. Um, what's her name? Kate. Ka- 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 Kelly. Yeah, I like her. Um, I like seeing people that that look different than what we're used to. And that's not right. a thing about her, um, her looks as a person. Cause I think she's beautiful, but I mean like just people that are different, not just white women, not just black women, not just, you know, just people that are, that are different, that, that show that there are people in the world other than black and white people, mostly white people, but yeah, you know, um, still. also cool, cool thing about her is like, she is a retired professional boxer. So like, um, her, if she looks like a badass, it's cause she really is one. Cause she had a few belts during her career too. So, so yeah. Oh, I'm glad you said that because the thing I did like about that, her character is that she does look very much like a badass, but they showed on numerous occasions that she's very, um, kind. Mm-hmm. And it seems that she's compassionate too, which is good because usually they have um, these these characters that are badass and they they are um, they're badass all the time. They're never just mm-hmm. just calm people. They they always have that kind of almost bootstrap mentality. Um, yeah. And it doesn't seem like she has that. It seems like she she is caring even when it comes to her sister and whoever the case is about and the missing people and. She's got something for Jody. I don't know um, if it's just professionalism or familiarity. I don't know, but it seems like they have some history, of course. But yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I like, I just like her character from what I've seen so far because she's, she's not what I expected her to be. All right, so let me give my general impressions. And first, let me say I feel like I'm neither in nor out right now. Um, the episode didn't like. You know, blow me away, but at the same time, it, it wasn't a situation where I was like, I don't want to see this through. I'm just mm-hmm. kind of like, hmm, I'm along for the ride. But my main um, criticism, which is um, a little bit, I guess, by design, but also I, I feel like can be a hindrance as we continue with the season. Um, we, off the bat, we immediately know that the season. Um, I don't know if it's tied to the rest of the series, but it's at least tied, I mean, in some ways that we'll discuss later, to season one. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, um, the tone and the look of the show 
is such a departure from like the f- the consistent feel of like the previous seasons because even like two and three still like felt the same. It's such a departure that it's almost like, wait, am I watching a show in the in the same universe? Like, like did you did you feel that? Like, did you feel like you were watching like a different, almost like a different series entirely? I felt like I was watching an HBO show, but not True Detective. Exactly. That makes yeah. sense. So, like, yeah. we 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 made a couple comments, and I was being funny, of course, but I'm like, you know, um, the leftovers, Night Country, mm-hmm. the OA, Night Country, because there uh-huh. there are elements of it that that you see from other places, but not necessarily True Detective. Like, if I didn't know that this was True Detective, I wouldn't put them together. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's yeah. okay with me. Like, I'm I'm okay with that. Um. But like we were saying last episode, is if you're going to call it True Detective, though, you kind of got to make it fit, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like it's got to it's got to follow the rules, kind of. But like, and then just having the pictures in the spiral, that's not enough. So hopefully they'll they'll do more to put it in there. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out the the order of operations. I want to do this. Like, do you want to? Let, let me just jump into like the, the Easter eggs to, to let people know why it's like directly tied to, to, to season one. These are some things that like jumped out to me, and I'm pretty sure there are more that I may have missed. Um, obviously, the the um, the big thing was the Lone Star beer on the table. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, there is a scene where um, Callie Reese's character um, Evangeline Navarro goes to. No, Navarro, Navarro? Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She goes to a um a crab processing plant, and the name of the plant is, of course, like King Crab is the thing. But the name they very much want you to see that the name of the plant is Blue King. Um. Also, when um when Jodie Foster's character, Ed, which <laughs> apologies that her character's name slips my mind right now but as she you know is reorganizing the picture she organizes them in a in a spiral also um the 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 theme song billy eilish's song i feel like there there are mentions of like spirals and circles in that mm-hmm. in that theme song um also a few things that aren't directly tied to um to season one that i think are like easter eggs that might be pertinent um the book that's on the bed um, at the facility um, is Blood Meridian by uh, Cormac McCarthy. And I'm going to spoil Blood Meridian for you. I'm sorry for people out there. Um, a young boy joins a gang, and that gang goes and kills a Native woman. So, um, yeah. Also, mm-hmm. D, mm. the, 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 the biggest... The biggest Easter egg of the mall, which is like something I feel like you stumbled across. Like last week, we mentioned that the location couldn't be a coincidence. The fact that it was in Alaska. And D and I were talking after the show, and I jokingly said, like, yeah, I just want to know what connection this has to Russ Cole. And D, what did you say? I said, Travis is Russ' daddy. I was joking. 100%. It was an off comment. I threw it out there. I had, there was no part of me that was serious. However, Bernie finds out and tells me that Cole's daddy is named. Yeah, Trav- Travis. Travis Cole is is actually Russ Cole's father. And yes, he he would have died um, in, in what was the present day timeline of True Detective, which was like, um, I guess you could say it was like 20, 2012, right? Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. though it came out 2015, they said it was 2012. So yeah, if, if this is actually happening in present day, this being night country and he died in 2012, then obviously we're seeing like an apparition of him mm-hmm. out in the dark. Also, I forgot to mention one other Easter egg. Um, the, the movies, they, they want you to see the movies too. One of the movies... Is the thing? Are you familiar with the thing? I'm familiar. I don't know the backstory, but I know it's about the. I mean, you know, I know mm. it's popular, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. So basically, monster facility out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the Easter eggs. And um, last week we talk up, we talked 
about this too, whether or not this show was like just, I guess, flirting with the supernatural or or actually supernatural. D, I think it's safe to say like this show is actually like supernatural now, right? Mm-hmm. I think yes, and I have a theory about that kind of okay. So Danvers, by the way, is uh, Jodie Foster's character. Danvers, Danvers, yeah. Is Danvers. Um, okay, so Navarro's sister is obviously battling some sort of um, something. And I don't want to say mental illness because I don't know what it is, but they're leaning heavily towards that. And it's also implied that their mother may have also suffered with some something. I don't know if it was bipolar mm-hmm. or schizophrenia or whatever it is. Um but with that, she was making sure to say to her sister, you're nothing like mom. You're nothing like mom. I'm glad you're here. And mm-hmm. I think that they can use that to le- make our focus all on her sister saying her sister's not like that and making it seem like Navarro is the, quote, sane one or the one that doesn't have to worry about the mental illness. But in actuality, if it runs in the family or if it's genetic, she could also be suffering from the same thing. I'm saying yeah. that to say we can very much look at it and say it's supernatural, but they can also throw in there like, oh, no, you just thought it was this way because you were seeing it through her eyes and she is dealing with whatever else. But I do think 100 percent there's something supernatural about it because, I mean, yeah. Travis was out dancing. And I mean, there was a quote that they said in the preview that said, don't what did I said. I told you it said don't. Don't confuse spirit the spiritual world with mental illness. So I think that's going to be the part that's going to yeah. be the tricky one because they can always say this is a spiritual thing, meaning that's what she saw the apparition because that could be spiritual, that could be an angel, that could be something reaching out from for her and not something she imagined. Versus these people seeing things and it being, I guess, kind of confusing about which is which. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can see the most. I don't think they're gonna so, say it so, explicitly. So I was gonna say I, I also could see them explaining it away with like the, the facility. Like it could be like, oh, something's in the water, you know, like <laughs> oh that drove but, crazy. No, really. Yeah, like almost yeah. like um almost like it's like an environmental crime, you know. Like I could mm-hmm. I could see them trying to like use that to explain it away too. Um, but but yeah, um this first episode is it was kind of like I said it was kind of jarring because it feels so much like a departure from the rest of the show that I was like am I watching the same series because because yeah like they they jumped like they jumped like right into it from from the from the CGI um yeah <laughs> oh because the animals I forgot about the animals because mm. they jumped they jumped pretty much to their death right? yeah I'm assuming yeah. they died. I didn't, I didn't show us, but I'm assuming they died. I have a yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that they are um okay, so what's happening or happened to the researchers? Do you think that's totally separate to what that case is gonna be? Because I feel like the 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 connection is gonna be the case because they found the tongue. Do you think that's hers, the that victims? And well, if so, also, how was uh, it preserved? The, the, well, okay, so let let's I guess walk through the case. So mm-hmm. there's a guy in the kitchen area making the sandwich, and then there's the other guy like freaking out, and he says she's awake. And the next thing we know, like we just move away from that scene. But also, as Devers is going through the picture, um, one guy is wearing the same jacket. That um I I feel like her name is like Kauto um the 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 previous case she she has a picture wearing that same jacket as well so obviously there's a connection there and she was never confirmed dead she was just missing and the fact that um that tongue that they discovered um is still like it, it's not like petrified or anything or even like um or even kind of like. I, I guess deteriorating, like it's it's still like intact and like was like relatively fresh, and and the last thing that we hear from the crew is like, oh, she she's awake now. Um, it it has to be connected. If not, then like I'm gonna be leaving with more 
questions to answer. So I'm going to be like, well, what was the point of like making these two cases intersect in the first place? Okay. So let's, let's go back. Cause I just want to make sure. Okay. The, the girl that Navarro found, she's dead. Right. Which girl? The one that she found because she was saying, you're not the one that found her. She's like, they, they threw her body out. And mm -hmm. after they stabbed her all those whatever times they had already thrown her out, then they oh her yeah and yeah cut out her yeah tongue. yeah right like she's she's dead. Oh okay okay. See, I'm 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 conflating two things. My bad. Yeah, she is she is she is dead. Okay, but she's dead. But 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 who is she though? Like you're saying, because I forgot the, the she the she that's awake about yeah. the she that's awake. And yeah. if that if that girl is dead, there has to have been time so if that is her tongue did they just keep it and put it somewhere i would have yeah. i have never seen a severed tongue i want to put that out there i don't know how long yeah. it can survive outside of someone's mouth but i would assume just like all of the flesh it would deteriorate over time so there's no way it could look like that still if it hadn't been preserved that jacket that's the same jacket right i mean i guess mm -hmm. it could not be but that's that's same jacket. That's the same jacket. Yeah. So it could just be that this dude came and did research and in his spare time killed a girl. Well, we Stranger also things still, have happened, but yeah. we also still don't know what's happening at the facility because I, I, I think I think the um the link to Travis might prove to be, you know, pretty important. Like we might find out that this isn't some ghost is actually, you know, maybe they're, they're up to some funny business in the facility. So when he said she's awake, it's like, you know, and which is going to be a bit of a cop out, but um, I feel like characters this season are going to be seeing the, the girl that thinking that they're seeing a ghost, but you know, whatever mm. they were doing in the facility, like she like is actually, I don't know. But yeah, it'll be interesting well, you know, to see how that plays out. Because he was having like a seizure. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, you okay? He was like, she's awake. So what the heck was that? It was too much. Yeah. yeah I and when say, they were found, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I watched the episode completely thinking I would watch it twice, but I didn't want to watch it again. I'm just saying. So all of this stuff is kind of coming back to me. A lot happened, and it seemed like a, me a mess almost like I won't say a mess because I don't want to say it was a bad episode. It wasn't, but it just a whole lot of stuff was thrown at you. And I don't know mm -hmm. how much we need to retain. I guess I'll just have to watch. Like that's, that's kind of what I like to do. I watch yeah. when they show, you know, previously on night country, I show what they make sure to show us because I know that's what's what's important. So I'll just do that next week, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, this this episode was like an information dump, and I can tell the things that they wanted you to know because once again, you the you you know when it comes to screenwriting, what I what I dread the most, good old exposition. So exposition. When, um, so when. When Evangeline was talking to the guy that's the brother of, of the victim, it was like, yes, my sister who disappeared two years ago. Evangeline, yeah, that case really rocked you so much so that you joined the state troopers and left the yeah, I was like, I was like, okay, all right. So we're we're you're giving us all of the backstory right here. Okay, cool. So I know what you want us to 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 pay attention to. So yeah, I say that to say this this episode was like a lot of information, and the thing about that is, um, you don't really know what's like a pertinent detail versus a detail that's just like means nothing. It's, it's like just being thrown at you 100 miles per hour. Let's go through some of it. Okay. Um, Danvers has a daughter, which at this point we can assume is her stepdaughter because she said at one point, you don't have to look after me. My dad would understand. I'm assuming it's mm. her stepdaughter. Okay. She made a sex tape with a minor. 
I'm assuming she's not a minor because she made a point to say she's 16. And um, I paid attention to that fact because my husband was like, 15, 16, doesn't matter. I was like, well, it could, could matter a lot. Like it could be a big difference um, when yeah. it comes to legal action. Okay. That's one thing they threw out there. Um, the, the, in, well, he's not an intern. The, the, the son, because Danvers is, is the chief, I'm thinking maybe. Is she also, not? let me, let me. Let, let me let me let me interject the age of consent in Alaska is is 16 so I guess that's yeah. why there yeah you go. I just I just I just Google that by the way um FBI agents at Google I, I'm just researching the show like don't <laughs> don't don't come for me Please. Um, at least we got it on here for posterity <laughs> yeah but the son it the there are three officers at least at this mm -hmm. um police department there's danvers there's the guy i wish i knew his, i'm gonna look it up but the, John, the father Hobbs. and son yeah prior is his name yeah hank and peter hank is the yeah. dad peter is the son but they're prior right so peter is that his son that he went to go see mm -hmm. with the native girl because she was like how did i fall for a white boy i get that but yeah. was the yeah. baby he is yeah yeah i think we can okay. assume that that was the son Okay, so the son has, he's in a relationship with a girl, a native girl. So there's that. Um, the father is getting a male order bride. Yeah. See, all this stuff, you know, it's just stuff. Awesome. <laughs> um, Navarro has a good friend that she calls every now and then, uses and steals his toothbrush. Um, I don't know. Her sister has episodes and she's obviously good friends with the police department because he said, you know, the, the officer that was called said, we'll keep it between us. Um, her mother is, I don't know where her mother is, yeah, yeah. but it's either, I would assume she's either deceased or hospitalized or has been hospitalized once because her sister was very adamant about not going to the hospital. Like, it's a lot of stuff. Mm. There was a drunk lady that's always drunk that she had to go and put in a drunk tank because she had an accident. Mm. Um, and I think that's who we got. So far. I think that's everybody. Oh, and Pryor has a whole bunch of cases in his house, case files in his house. Yeah. And he didn't want to give her that one. Right. I, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption. It's not that he didn't want to give it to her because he's bad. I think she just maybe buried herself in it and, and was doing too much and he mm -hmm. didn't want to give it back to her. So she would go back deep into whatever rabbit hole she was in. I still think it was a professional, but whatever. He's also sleeping with the drunk, obviously. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, and it's going to be dark for, you know, have, um, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, it's, and that, Travis. That was like the. Don't wait, forget Travis. Yeah. Don't forget Travis. It, What's the, oh, sorry. Navarro saw a polar bear with one eye in the middle of the mm -hmm. street. Was that mm -hmm. real or not? Um. So, I feel like this is our overlap with Yellow Jackets. Yeah, See? because um, <laughs> obviously, in like um, in like I guess, and, and and you know, I hate to 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 misspeak, but I've I've seen this like a lot and like i guess certain indigenous tribes they're like um their mythology like the like the bear is very prevalent so like that bear definitely means something to her and the fact that it has one eye we don't know what that means but you know i guess we'll we'll find that part out soon i was scared for a second i thought uh i thought she was racist danvers because she made that spirit animal comment did you you recall she says something mm -hmm. to the effect of, I did something. And she was like, why'd you do that? Did your spirit animal tell you to do it? I was like, oh, no, mm -hmm. man, you racist. Yeah. Dang it. Darn. But with that said, that kind of shows you her character to say, even if you're not a racist, well, I don't know if you cannot be if you say something that flippant and think nothing of it, knowing it's offensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she got a little bit in there. And I think that's important because she's raising uh you know the girl her daughter yeah yeah I, I i think i think i think we're we're also setting up the um, 
mother daughter. We're also saying of like the traditional daughter. like detective archetype of like the believer and the non believer. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if I'm not mistaken, um, um, yeah. Evangeline has like a cross too. I think does she have like a cross chain? Am am, am I making that up? No, uh, she does. She does. She does. Yeah, yeah. So in addition to you know, cause cause in the um, in the trailer for the next episode, she's talking about she 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 prays and it's like, oh, what are you asking for? Like, no, I'm doing this to listen actually. So mm-hmm. yeah. And they were also very surprised that she believed in God. Cause who asked mm-hmm. her? Somebody asked her, "Do she believe in God?" She was like, "Yeah." He's mm-hmm. like, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, don't don't offend me if you ask me a question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. gracious. So yeah, that's where she is. That's that's all that we got in there. Um they for some reason Danvers didn't express how much she was invested in the case to Navarro. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, because for some reason Evangeline was under the impression that she didn't care about it at all. And she's like, Well, uh-huh. I did. And once she found out about the jacket, I think she she was actually happily, you know, she was pleasantly surprised mm-hmm. that she looked into the case. So I'm not sure what that jacket is going to mean to them or the Parker when they find it. Um, it will at least link the two, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's and- linking the two because obviously so one of the guys at the facility like knew her obviously intimately for her to have more in that same jacket. So Mhm. Yeah. So that's, that's that's yeah. Um do you hmm, I guess so we're we're dealing with two cases that mm-hmm. maybe have something to do with each other. Mm-hmm. Do we get a resolution for both? We will have to, right? Because what what I think what I think we're gonna do is like start like looking into her past, and as we look into her past, more suspects will emerge. But also, mm-hmm. as we look into the, the the present case, we'll figure out exactly what they were doing at that facility and why there could be ties between the two. Because um, also the um, the the lady from the first case was um like an environmental activist, um, mm-hmm. just activists in general had like, I guess several enemies from that regard, because I think there's a quote where they were, they were like, um, you know, once you shut down the plant, you shut down the town. So, and, and she was, you know, I, I, against the, the plant because in the preview for the next episode, we see her like pro, like, I, I guess a flashback in the past where she was like protesting or something at the plant. So, uh, I, I think we're we're going to see like a like a like a link, and and like I said, I the 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 more I think about it, I I, I really think that it's going to be almost explained away with like almost like this was an environmental thing, and people mm-hmm. in this town are almost like you know situations where people live next to plants that have like waste and waste get into the water and it it affects them physically and mentally i feel like that's going to be the thing that explains the way the supernatural because that would also explain why russ cole was having hallucinations because he's from that town hey you just reminded me dude said the water went to shit remember when she went Mm -hmm. to his trailer i forgot about that so yeah you're right Mm -hmm. that's very very much could be a problem because if he noticed it, you know, it always starts in the in the the less uh, affluent mm-hmm. areas first mm-hmm. in 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 travels. Because when mm-hmm. he said something about the water, and I knew he had a son there, I was like, "Well, what's the baby drinking?" And I said, "Baby," because he's a child, not that he's a yeah. you know, baby. But yeah. I was like, "What's the baby drinking?" So if his because he was drinking beer, the kid can't mm-hmm. drink beer. He's got to drink something. And if the water's bad, then What's he doing? And yeah. keep in mind, she brushed her teeth with that water. That's they're bathing mm-hmm. in that water. So mm-hmm. it could very well be. Did she see the polar bear before yeah. or after she left that man's house? I don't remember. Either way, that's where we are. So I think you're right with that. Plus, he brought supply, he had 
brought supplies, but they were running low. So who knows mm -hmm. what they were doing before he got there? Mm -hmm. I think you're right, though. I think it's going to definitely end up being there's it's not a coincidence that she was an environmental that she was protesting mm -hmm. and she was silenced and that there's something going on with their water. Mm -hmm. We shall see. I don't know. Yeah. But but yeah, obviously this is tied to to season one. We we know that much. Um and <laughs> and and I, I tweeted out as a joke um last night. I was like, oh, this is going to be true detective no way home because I I'm almost <laughs> like I'm almost like 60% sure. Like we're gonna see like long haired Matthew McConaughey pop up at the end. Like I'm just like I'm just saying. I would I wouldn't mind it at all, actually. Not at all. Because Mind because it. like what what makes you think that Russ Cole in Louisiana after he, you know, took down um the, the children's guy stopped there? What makes you Why think Why would he? he exactly? There's nothing in there in Louisiana form. He he probably made a stop in Arkansas too. Like who knows? Yeah. But but yeah, like surprised. I, I I I really feel like there's going to be like a Doctor Strange portal that opens, and then Russ Cole is gonna step out, and then we're we're all just gonna clap and cheer. Yeah, not gonna clap and cheer. Um, what does the executive <laughs> producer do? I'm asking you this because I noticed mm. that Woody Harrelson is one. Matthew mm. McConaughey is one. Nick is one. Mm. Jodie Foster is one. What do they do? Mm. Are they just for the so, money? Yeah. So the executive yeah. producer, um, they secure funds, but they also can secure like talent and have like some say so over the creative direction. Um, it's more so than than a producer. A producer is mostly like, okay, this person is a tie. Is tied to this project so they can secure funding but the executive producer has like just a little more leeway to like call call the shots so yeah okay cool well great because i noticed all of them were there and i'm like okay well they really cared about the project so that's good yeah yeah yay right. well i don't have anything else for this episode but i i expected that because this was the first right. one um right I'm I'm hoping that it that it does well for the rest of us. Like we were saying, it's only six episodes, so it's only so much they can they can cut or fill. Like they just need to give us mm. what we need, especially since they've thrown so much. Mm. So like they they've opened so many holes that they have to mm. <laughs> they have to close. And I don't know if you can do that in six episodes, six mm. hours, I guess, or well, five hours now. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see. I think they can, but we'll see. Yeah, I will say this. Um, also, as I was like, um. As I was like googling stuff, I did see that this had like a very successful premiere, like um, two million people tuned in to watch it. And if you consider that this was going um, head to head with a with a primetime NFL show, very good numbers. So um, regardless, um, you know, I I do think there needs to be spaces for more um, for more female directors, female leads. Um, to to have success without you know people shitting on their projects just because you know they don't want to see female driven stuff. So the mm -hmm. fact that this has such a successful like um, first episode, very encouraging. Um, good job to the team for that. But yeah, uh, we will continue to watch. We will be here with theories and whatnot. Let us know what you think, what you picked up. Um, did we miss anything? Let us know how you're feeling about the first episode. But yeah, until next time. Peace. Peace.